And we're now going to talk about planes. How do we write down an equation for a plane? So here's a picture of her plane. Now one can describe a plane using two pieces of data. First one needs a point on the plane, which we're going to call R0. And as usual, I regard this as the vector from the origin to this point. And second, we need a normal vector to the plane. So this is a vector n, which is perpendicular to every vector on the plane. So R0 is a point on the plane. And n is a normal or perpendicular vector to the plane. Now, a general point on the plane, so here's some other point r on the plane. So for point r on the plane, if you look at the vector from r0 to r, that is the vector r minus r0, it's perpendicular to n. And that will be true if and only if r is on the plane. So r is on the plane when r minus r0 is perpendicular to n. So we can write this as an equation that the dot product of r minus r0 with n is equal to 0. So this is the vector equation for the plane. We can get an alternate equation for the plane by expanding this vector equation and its components. So if we write r0 equals x0, y0, z0, n equals a, b, c, and r equals x, y, z, then this equation is x minus x0, comma, y minus y0, comma, z minus z0, dot a, b, c, equals 0. And when I evaluate this dot product, I get the equation ax plus by plus cz equals d, where d equals ax0 plus by0 plus cz0. So any plane can be written in this form, ax plus by plus cz equals d, and conversely, an equation of the form ax plus by plus cz equals d corresponds to a plane. So these are two different ways of writing a plane. The note, so planes through the origin are those with d equals zero. Why is that? Well, if you want to test whether this plane goes to the origin, you have to plug in x equals 0, y equals 0, z equals 0 into this equation, and that will satisfy the equation exactly when d equals 0. Another way to describe a plane is by giving three points on it. So just as two points determine a line, three points determine a plane, as long as these three points do not all lie on the same line. So let's look at the plane. through three non-collinear points. Non-collinear means not all on the same line. Let's call the points R0, R1, and R2. Now, to describe, the, let's draw the picture. 
here's r0. As usual, I'm thinking of this as the vector from the origin to this point, but I won't draw that. And here's r1, and here's r2. Now to describe this plane, I need a point on the plane and a normal vector to the plane. Now I have a point on the plane, in fact I have three of them, so I just need a normal vector. Now to make a normal vector, recall that the dot product of two vectors, excuse me, the cross product of two vectors is orthogonal to both. So let's look at the vectors r1 minus r0 and r2 minus r0. If I take the cross product of these two vectors, I'll get a vector n, which is orthogonal to both. And since r0, r1, and r2 are not all on the same line, in fact, n will be non-zero and perpendicular to every vector in the plane. Here by vector in the plane, I mean a vector which is the difference between two points on the plane. Um, so the equation for the plane becomes r minus r0 dot r1 minus r0 cross r2 minus r0 equals 0. Another way we can write this equation is to recall that if you take three vectors and you take the cross product of two and dot product the result with a third, you get the determinant of a matrix. So this equation is equivalent to a determinant of r minus r0, r1 minus r0, r2 minus r0 equals 0. And this notation means I have a 3 by 3 matrix here. The top row of the matrix consists of the three components of the vector r minus r0. The second row consists of the three components of r1 minus r0, and so on. Also recall that this determinant is 0 exactly when the volume of the parallelopiped generated by these three vectors is 0. That happens when these three vectors all lie in the same plane. That is to say when r minus r0 is on the same plane as r1 minus r0 and r2 minus r0. Okay. Now just to preview what's coming, we can also describe a plane as a parameterized surface. So, so far we've only talked about parametrized curves, which depend on one parameter, t. A parametrized surface depends on two parameters, t1 and t2, and as these parameters vary, you move around on the surface. The plane can be written as r of t1, t2 equals r0 plus t1 times r1 minus r0 plus t2 times r2 minus r0.